All right, recording in progress, I heard. And we'll share the screen. All right, so we're back to doing the show method. So I'll do some more today. I was going to show you some which are actually not from our text. It was from the previous edition, but it reinforces the idea of the show method. So I'm going to show you some problems which are not from the homework, but they're good illustrations. They were from the seventh edition of the text. <clears throat> so a reminder where we were. So we have the shell method. You're basically integrating two pi r h, circumference times the height. For the disk method, you're integrating pi r squared. Right? So those are things to keep in mind in those. Okay. And let's see, so we're here. I'm finishing up 6.3 today. So tomorrow 6.4, and I'll give you a quiz tomorrow on 6.2 and 6.3, disk method and show method. I'll give you one disk, I'll give you one show. So now that you've seen one quiz, they're all like that. Um, I'll give you the quiz you have until 11.59 p.m. tomorrow evening, so the rest of the day to do the quiz, open everything, open book, open note, open discussion. The following Friday, the third, we do not have a quiz because we're having our first test. <clears throat> So the first test is chapter six. Um, if you haven't already done so, start putting together a formula sheet, cheat sheet, front and back, eight and a half by 11. Put anything you want. It should be in your own writing though. You can put formulas, sample problems, whatever you wish. And that one attendance is mandatory. So you don't have to show up uh, face to, uh, in person on you know this day, this day, this day. But on the exams, you have to actually show up uh, with your camera on, true background, don't have behind you the Golden Gate Bridge or something like that, and keep yourself muted, okay? And you don't have to physically be present, you know, here, 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 until the second exam and so forth, okay? And you have to submit this. You must give me at least 70% of the homework in order for me to count your exam. That's really a joke because I end up doing a huge percentage of the problems anyway, so there's not really that much extra you have to do and go back and study all this stuff. Okay, so on the exam, uh, you have to show up. I'll take attendance on exam days. Have your first and last name as on my row sheet, right? And um, I'll send the exam on Canvas announcements. I've been giving you the videos on Canvas announcements. So just before class <coughs> next Friday, I'll send on Canvas announcements the exam. Then you join our class, do the exam. I'll close at nine o'clock as usual. And then you have until 9.05 to take pictures on your cell phone, click, 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 click. And you get until 9.30 to submit the homework. But if you want to submit the homework early, you can submit the homework early also, okay? So that's what's uh, happening for now, okay? <clears throat> and again, yeah, uh, if you haven't already done so, I need a photo ID. Um, so I'm not gonna grade your exam unless I get a photo ID with your name on it. That's all I need. So if you're taking, let's say your driver's license, just uh, have your name, and your photo, you can blacken out everything else that's there. I just need your name and picture, okay? All right, so I'm gonna show you a series of problems that were from the seventh edition, just for more practice. Okay, so ignore the numbering and ignore any dates, ignore the numbering. So this is from the old edition, 11. I put a star, I mean, it's not R11. It's close to it, but not quite R11. <clears throat> okay, Y equals X cubed. Y equals eight, X equals zero, spin about the X axis. So Y equals X looks like that. X equals zero is the Y axis, Y equals eight. Okay, so here's the picture. I'm spinning about the X axis. So the shell method means in this case, slice delta Y. If I slice delta X, in this case, you would have the washer. Okay, it would be a big disc minus a little disc. But delta Y slicing this way and spin about the X axis, it would kind of go like that. So you end up with these shells, right? <clears throat> so I'm integrating circumference times height. The thickness is delta y, and the integral becomes dy. So 2 pi radius, here's the radius, that's y. So 2 pi y. <clears throat> and then the height. Now, if I'm integrating with respect to y, I need x as a function of y. So I can't leave it as y equals x cubed. I need x as a function of y. That's easy, just take the cube root. So x is cube root of y, which we know is y to the one third. 
All right, so circumference is two pi y times the height. The height is x. X is cube root of y or y to the one third dy. All right, so there we go. Take out the two pi, y to the three thirds, right? Y to the one. Y to three thirds times y to the one third is y to the four thirds. All right, so power root, add one and divide by the new exponent, two pi. Y to the seven thirds divided by seven thirds means times three sevens. So this comes out to be six pi over seven. Plug in zero, you get zero. Plug in eight. Eight to the seven thirds means cube root of eight. Cube root of eight is two. And then two to the seventh. You can punch it in your calculator. Two times two times two times two times two times two times two, times two is 128. So the final answer is 268 pi over seven. Yeah, again, this is not a homework problem, but it's just more reinforcement of how to do problems with the show method. Okay, this one I call 15 star. Again, it's not one of the problems in this book. It's from the previous edition. Y equals X to the fourth, bounded by Y equals zero. Y equals zero is the X axis. X equals one. So this thing spin about x equals two. Okay, so shell method, shell method, do I slice delta x or delta y? Okay, so I've got delta x. Okay, so if I take this piece straight up, I spin it about here, I see shells going around like this. If you were to slice delta y this way and spin it around, you'd have washers, you would have a disc minus another disc, so to speak. But here we're doing the show method. All right, so if I take this thing and spin it over here, I'm going like this, this is my radius. So my slices are delta x, so I'm going to integrate with respect to x. So how far is it from here to here? So again, we have to do some subtraction. How far is it from here to here? Two. How far is it from here to here? X. The distance from any point to the y axis is X. Therefore, this is the difference of the two, two minus X. Okay, one more time. This is two. This is X. So this is two minus X. Height. How far is it from here? To here, well, that's just y. And what is y? x to the fourth. So I'm good. So I integrate circumference times the height. Circumference 2 pi r, r is 2 minus x, times the height, x to the fourth. And delta x becomes dx. Okay. So that's that. Okay, take out the 2 pi. Distribute 2x to the fourth minus x to the fifth. <laughs> so 2 pi is out. 2x to the fourth becomes 2x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the sixth over 6 from 0 to 1. And we like plugging in 0. 0 quite often gives me 0. And we like plugging in 1. Remember, 1 raised to anything is 1. 1 to the fifth is 1. 1 to the sixth is 1. No matter how many times you multiply 1, right? 1 to the sixth means 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Times one. That's still 1. So I just end up with two fifths minus one six. A little bit of arithmetic, common denominator is 30. <clears throat> 12 minus five. Sorry, that's 12 minus five. That's a 12 there. 12 minus five is seven. Two pi times seven over 30. Two cancels to 30. Final answer is seven pi over 15. Okay, and I was going to show you one more starred problem before going back and doing uh, some problems at the end, 37 and 41. So 19 star, again, I don't think this matches our problem. No, it does not. This is from a previous edition. But again, it's just for extra practice. Y equals X cubed, <clears throat> bounded by Y equals zero, and X equals one, spin about Y equals one. And Y equals X cubed, we know it looks something like this. 
y equals zero is the x-axis, x equals one. So this piece spin about y equals one. So if I'm doing the show method, my slices are delta y, okay? not delta x. See, how do you know? If I slice this way, I'm going like this. I spin it way up here. It's going to go like so. There's this hole in the middle. So I end up with a cylinder. Okay? But if I slice with delta x this way, I end up with a washer or really a disc minus another disc. A big, there's a big disc going from here to here minus a smaller disc going from here to here. So I have to take this thing and spin it up here. So if I take this thing, and spin it way up there, this is my radius. So what is the radius? And the argument is distance from here to here, one. Distance from here to here is y. Therefore, this radius is the difference between the two, one minus y. And now the height. Okay. Looks like I'm integrating dy because this is a little delta y. So once again, I need to solve for x. Same thing, x is equal to cube root of y, or y to the one third. So how far is it from here to here? It's upper minus lower. Y2 minus, uh, sorry, X2 minus X1, the difference in the X values. So how far is it from here to here? One. How far is it from here to here? X. So this is gonna be one minus X. And what is X? Y to the one third power. So I need to change everything to y since I'm integrating delta y, this becomes a dy. So when I'm integrating dy, this expression cannot have any x's in it. So yes, this is one minus y. Yes, this is one minus x, but I don't leave it as x. I change it to y to the one third power. Okay, so circumference two pi r, two pi times one minus y times the height. How high is this rectangle? Well, bigger minus smaller, larger, further to the right, minus further to the left. So one minus y to the one third dy. Okay, now I clean this up, take out the two pi. <clears throat> so FOIL, one minus y to the one third, minus y plus y to the four thirds. Y times y to the one third is y to the four thirds. Now integrate, leave off the two pi. Integral of one is y. Integral of y to the one third is y to the four thirds divided by four thirds, three fourths, <coughs> minus y to the one becomes y squared over two. Y to the four thirds becomes y to the seven thirds divided by seven thirds means times three sevenths. So again, it's just a messy arithmetic. Plug in zero, you get zero, 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 zero. Plug in one, again, one raised to anything is one. So one, I just look at the coefficients. One minus three fourths minus one half plus three sevenths. Let's see, four, two, seven. So common denominator is 28. So one is 28 over 28. Minus three fourths is 21 over 28. One half is 14 over 28. Three over seven is 12 over 28. So, do that arithmetic, two pi times five over 28, five pi over 14, final answer. <clears throat> All right, so that was some supplemental problems that we have there. And now some of the problems at the end that were assigned, 37, 39, 41. The region bounded by the given curves is rotated about the specified axis, find the volume of the resulting solid by any method. So that means you get to pick a method. All right, so 37. Y equals negative X squared plus six X minus eight. Bounded by Y equals zero, that's the X axis. Okay, so first I got to find out what this thing even looks like. So where does it touch Y equals zero? So I plug in zero. Negative X squared 
plus six X minus eight equals zero. It's a quadratic. It's probably easier if you multiply both sides by negative one. X squared minus six X plus eight equals zero. <coughs> Factor X minus two X minus four equals zero. So X equals two, X equals four. So two, four. And well, you can make a couple arguments. One, you could say, I know it goes up because it's a parabola which opens down. So it has to go something like this. Another way to do it is just pick a number between two and four, like three. So I stuck in a three here and a three there. That's what that three is. If you plug in three, you get negative nine plus 18 minus eight, which is one. Okay, so it's three comma one. All right, so I know it goes like this. All right, so take this thing, spin it about the y axis. Now, if I spin it about the x axis, I can kind of visualize that. Spin it, you kind of get something that looks like a football, right? But if I take this and spin it this way, you get some weird shape that I can't even visualize. Okay, but in any event, it looks like we're going to slice delta x. If you try to slice delta y, that's going to be messy. You have to have x as a function of y. That's not going to be easy to do here. So we'll just keep it y as a function of x and spin it this way. So it's going to be the show method. Okay, again, how do you know? If I take this thin slice like that, spin it about the y-axis, goes like this. <coughs> right? So I'm going to do shells. So circumference times height times thickness. You're not integrating the thickness usually because you have delta x here. Delta x just becomes dx. So I need the radius from here to here. That's just x. The height, you know, it's just y. And what is y? All this stuff. So I'm integrating 2 pi r, which is x, times the height, which was this thing, negative x squared plus 6x six minus 8 dx. And I'm integrating from 2 to 4. There's stuff between two and four. Okay, so circumference, two pi r, two pi x. The height is y. In this case, the y is negative x squared plus six x minus eight. And the thickness is dx. So there we go. They take out the two pi. <laughs> negative x cubed plus six x squared minus eight x. All right, so integrate two pi is outside, negative x to the fourth over four plus six x cubed over three, six x cubed over three, two x cubed. Let's see, eight x to the second over two minus four x squared. And if you want, double check by taking the derivative of this, right? If you differentiate this, see if you get that back. All right, from two to four. So plug in four, two pi's outside, negative four to the fourth divided by four is negative four cubed, negative 64. And then four cubed is 64 times two is 128, minus four times four times four is 64. Very conveniently, that's all zero. Minus, plug in two. So two to the fourth is 16, 16 divided by four is four, so negative four, plug in two, two times, two times two times two is 16, minus four times two times two is also 16. So these cancel out. So that's all gone, that's gone. I have minus and minus four, it's eight, eight times two pi, oh, sorry, four, four times two pi, eight pi. I don't know if it's eight pi. All right, and the last one I was going to show you is 41. Then I'd actually be done with the section. It's barely 8.30. So I'll be finished shortly. I'll introduce some of 6.4 just to get a little bit ahead. Okay, but we're probably going to finish a little bit early today. Okay, 41 says x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. Spin about the y-axis. Okay, this is a circle, you might recall, centered at zero comma one and a radius of one. So zero, one, radius of one. 
That's what it looks like. And you spin it about the y axis. So if I take this thing and spin it about the y axis, it generates a sphere, does it not? So I get a sphere. <clears throat> All right. Um, so I thought it's probably best to do this by the disk method. So if I spin it this way, slicing this way will give me disks. See, if I spin this way, I get a disk. So I need x as a function of y. And by the way, I can survive with just a semicircle. If I take the semicircle, spin it about the y-axis, I get the same sphere, don't I? So I just solve this for x. So how do I solve this thing for x? So first I subtract the y minus one squared. So right here, subtract this stuff. x squared equals one minus y minus one squared. Take the square root. I don't need the plus or minus. The plus is here, the minus is there. <clears throat> so square root of one minus parentheses, y squared minus 2y plus 1. And the ones cancel out. See the 1 minus 1? So it ends up being minus a minus 2y. I decided to write that first. 2y minus y squared. So this equation is x equals radical 2y minus y squared. That's this part here. If I'm integrating with respect to y, I need x as a function of y. And there it is. <clears throat> So I decided to do this one by the disk method. So the disk method is you're just integrating pi r squared. And what is the radius in this case? The radius is just x. All right, so I'm integrating as y goes from zero to two. I don't go negative one to one. That's if I was integrating with respect to x. Since I'm integrating with respect to y, I'm going from zero to two. So it's pi radius x squared dy. So it's radical 2y minus y squared, squared dy. And I like that because what happens when you have a square root? Squared. I'll just take out the square root. So I'm almost home free. So I'm integrating 2y minus y squared. Take out the pi. Remember, square root, squared. So I just do that. All right, so pi times integral of 2y is y squared. If you're using the formula, it's 2y squared over 2, and then 2s cancel out, right? <clears throat> y squared minus y cubed over 3 from 0 to 2. Plug in 0, you get 0. Plug in 2, you get 4 minus 8 over 3. And common denominator, 4 over 1 times 3 times 3. So that gives you 12 minus 8 or 4. So final answer is 4 pi over three. So that's the end of the problem, four pi over three. A quick double check though, you might recall we showed it to you the other day, the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed, right? So this would be a sphere with a radius of one. So if we go four thirds pi r cubed and r is one, then the volume is just four pi over three. So that's consistent with what we see over here also. Okay. All right, folks, so I'm actually done with 6.2 and 6.3. And yes, I admit, uh, for some of us, your head might be spinning about all the things that are going on. <clears throat> Look at the examples, put some sample problems on your cheat sheet. Even if you don't understand everything that's going on, that's okay. Just do what you need to do to get through the test. Um, like I said, when I first learned the material, I didn't understand what was going on right away. Uh, I just said, well, I have a choice. I can either wait until I understand it fully or I don't have time. I got to do what I need to do to pass the test, right? Okay. And then it wasn't until later, not even that semester, maybe another semester or further on, where it finally clicked in, oh, okay, I see what's going on now. Okay. So take these problems. I want you to understand it, obviously. Oops. But even if you don't understand it, Make sure you can do the mechanics of saying, okay, I do this. If I have the disk method, I'm integrating pi r squared. If I have the shell method, it's circumference times the height, right? So, and you're welcome to put some of these on your cheat sheet, your formula sheet, because the problems that I give you in the test are just like these. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I've done everything I was supposed to do. So I'm on par and a little bit ahead. I'll sneak in a little bit of 6.4. Help you. So tomorrow you get a quiz again, 
um, one problem on 6.2, one problem on 6.3, one disk method, one show method. Okay, and schedule wise, so we have two days for 6.4, two days for 6.5. Um, Thursday is sort of a question and answer day. You can ask me questions, but if you don't ask me stuff, I may just start sneaking in you know, the next chapter in order to get a little bit ahead. And our first test is on the third. And just a reminder, we have a holiday for Labor Day, Monday the 6th. So that's a nice time to have a test, I guess, just before the three-day weekend. Okay. All right, so I'm going to introduce a little bit of work. The next topic is the physics idea of work. 6.4 work. This is another section where it may not be obvious how to do these problems. I did not give you that many problems. Some of these problems can get really long. So it seems like there's not many problems. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight problems. One, three, seven, nine, 13A, 15, 21, 23. So eight problems. I think I'm going to end up doing maybe five of them. Although some of them I, I might say, et cetera, meaning I'm going to stop you do the rest of the problem. Okay, but I want to show you most of the problems. <clears throat> okay, the physics idea of work. So on page 455, work is equal to force times distance, equation two. If you want to put that down in your box, on your cheat sheet, you may. Work is force times distance. Now you might say, well, that's too easy. It's just give me the force and give me the distance and multiply it. Yeah, that's too easy. In fact, uh, if you were to take physics and some of you were taking physics, if you take physics without calculus, uh, maybe in high school, it was normally a constant force and a constant distance. What's tougher in calculus is maybe the force isn't constant or maybe the distance isn't constant, it keeps changing which makes it into a calculus problem. Now guess what we're gonna do? We're in calculus, we're not very many problems that are just this simple force times distance, take a number times another number, that's too easy. We're normally gonna to have to integrate because the force is not a constant or the distance is not a constant. Okay. All right, and let's see, other things you will need to know. Page 457 something called Hooke's Law. And you physics people have heard of this before, but if you've never heard of that, put this on your cheat sheet. Hooke's Law, f of x is kx. Okay. And that has to do with a force applied to a spring. Okay, so here's a picture. There's something called a natural position of a spring on page 457. So if you have a spring and you've got some weight over here, a property of a spring is it likes to be, quote unquote, at a certain position. It's a home position. It's a natural position of the spring. Okay? And then if you either stretch it or if you compress it, it's almost like the spring box and says, no, I don't want to be here. So if you let it go, either like this, right? If you compress it, it wants to go back to home position. Or if you stretch it again, after a while, it wants to go back to home position. Well, I guess you could compress it so badly that it breaks, or you could stretch it so much that it breaks. But if that doesn't happen, um, if you let it go, either if you compress it or if you stretch it, right, it kind of wants to go back to its home position. The force that's required by Hooke's law, by experimentation, is k times x. x is the distance away from the home position. So what that means is that the further away you get from the home position, the more force you have to apply it to get it to keep going. Okay, so that means right here, right? If I just want to push it a very small amount, I just kind of tap it, right? But if you want to compress it really much, you feel more and more tension, right? So it's almost as if they're saying, no, 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 I want to go back to home position. And the further away I am from home, the more resistance I'm going to put, right? So if I just want to move it, I don't know, an inch, okay, just push it a little bit. But if I'm going to compress it way up to here, you feel more force against it. It's like, I really don't like that. Okay? And likewise, if you're going the other way, Right? If you were to stretch it, just want to stretch it an inch. Okay, it's not that hard. But the more you stretch, you feel more pushback. It's as if the spring is saying, no, I don't want to go away from home. And the more you push, the more I'm going to resist to go out there. Right? So that's what Hooke's law says. F of x is equal to kx. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And as time goes by, there's going to be more um, constants that I have to give you and you'll be putting these on your formula sheet. Let's see, we'll have to do acceleration due to gravity and um, 
different kinds of units. So I'm going to talk a lot about units that are of work. Okay, but first let me go ahead and show you the problems. And yes, it looks like they're all word problems, okay, which is the reason why I only gave you these 6.4. So we have to go up to 23. Okay, so again, for the benefit of those of you that don't have the book, um, where am I? Page 458. So there's one and three. I think you can see that. Seven is there. Nine is there. Thirteen. Thirteen A. Fifteen. How high does it have to go? Twenty-one and twenty-three. Okay, so here's twenty-one and twenty-three. Okay, we have that. So the beginnings of work. First thing I do is talk a lot about units. Right, so work equals force times distance. So the physics definition of work, of course, there's, you know, English word work, and there's many ideas about that. Like I go to work and whatnot. Okay, but the physics definition of work, mathematics, is force times a distance. You apply a force to a given distance. Okay, so some units, put these on your cheat sheet if you're not familiar with these. You physics people have probably heard of some of this before. <clears throat> okay, in a metric system, the unit of work is the joule, J-O-U-L-E, okay, named after a physicist, James Prescott Joule was his name, J. Units of force is the Newton, and you've probably heard of Sir Isaac Newton, okay, one of the co-founders of calculus, Newton, and distance is in meters. Okay, so a joule of work is a Newton meter. Okay, so I take a force of one Newton and I move it one meter, that's considered one joule. So joule is a Newton meter. <laughs> now that does mean if the problem is given to me and it's not in meters, I think some of the problems were centimeters or millimeters or whatever, you have to change it to meters first. Okay, in the English system, for force, we use pounds. For distance, we have feet. And again, if it's not feet, like I think they give you inches, then you have to change it to feet. So what's a pound times a foot? Foot pound. That's literally what it's called, a foot pound. All right, so in the metric system, unit of work is the joule. It's equal to a Newton meter. Force times distance, Newton meter is a joule. English system, pound times a foot. The units are foot pounds. <laughs> so what is a foot pound? Take something that weighs a pound and move it a foot. That's a foot pound of work. All right, something we also need, so a little bit more physics here, and again, you physics people have seen some of this before. Force, force is mass times acceleration, Newton's second law of motion, some of you have heard of that. So force is mass times acceleration, of which one variety is weight equals m times g. So weight is a kind of force. Okay, so every weight is a force, but not every force is a weight. <clears throat> so when you weigh something like your own weight, your weight is the force that you're going down <coughs> toward, uh, toward the earth, right? <coughs> so weight is mg. G is acceleration due to gravity. <coughs> okay. And we even need that from time to time. So put these constants down on your cheat sheet. So F equals ma, a specific example of that is weight is mg. <clears throat> so the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, um, and again, you physics people have probably heard this before. So 9.8 meters per second squared. The units of acceleration are meters per second squared, meters per second per second. In the English system, 32 feet per second squared. <clears throat> and this is on Earth. Okay, we'll make the assumption that unless we see otherwise, we're doing all of our experiments on Earth. So when you look at the problems, okay, we're assuming we're on Earth. We're not on the moon, we're not on Mars or out in outer space, right? Okay, kilogram is a unit of mass, okay? So what's the difference between mass and weight? 
Okay, so a mass is a measure of how much stuff you have, measure of molecules and so on. Okay, but a weight, you multiply by the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so for instance, <clears throat> um, you have a certain mass. So if your mass, let's say, is 70 kilograms, you're 70 kilograms, whether you're on Earth, you're on the moon, you're on the Mars, or you're weightless in the International Space Station, let's say, right? Okay, now if you're on the International Space Station, your weight is essentially zero, okay? On Earth, you might say, okay, I'm 100, um, well, I'll use pounds, it might be 150 pounds, okay? If you want uh, astronauts uh, on the moon, like the Apollo astronauts in the 1960s and 70s, uh, if you weigh 150 on Earth, you might be only, I don't know, 70 on the moon. And if you were to be on Mars, you'd be maybe 120 or whatever. But if you're floating around in an international space station, your weight is zero. But in each case, your mass is the same. You would have the same, it's still you, the same amount of stuff within you. Okay, so let's say if you were 70 kilograms, you're 70 kilograms whether you're on Earth or the moon or Mars or uh, floating around in space on the international space station, but your weight would be different, right? Your weight might be 150 pounds on Earth, might be 70 pounds on the moon or 110 pounds on Mars and zero on this international space station, right? But you'd have the same amount of kilogram, you'd have the same mass in every circumstance. Okay. So the unit of mass is kilogram. Okay, so to convert it to weight, you'd have to multiply by the acceleration due to gravity. So let's say one Newton, so what is one Newton? It's one kilogram mass times one meter per second squared, okay? I think you've heard of second squared. If you're not comfortable with meters per second squared, it's really meters per second per second. It's a rate of change of velocity as time goes by. Okay, so meters per second per second. Right, so one Newton is one kilogram meter per second squared, but this is a mass, this is acceleration. All right, so there's a lot of units going on here in situations. Uh, so if they give me kilograms, I might have to change it to, the kilograms is a mass, I may need to change it to force or weight by multiplying by the acceleration due to gravity. And for the problems in, they're giving us, unless they say otherwise, we will make the assumption that everything's on Earth, not on the moon, not on Mars, not on the International Space, space Station or something else. Okay. Bro. Uh, all I'll do is problem one, which is very easy, and then I'm just going to quit pretty much after that. Okay, this one is like non-calculus physics. So if you were to take physics in high school that doesn't have calc, that's pretty much it. Okay, a 360-pound gorilla climbs a tree to a height of 20 feet. Find the work done if the gorilla reaches that height in 10 seconds, five seconds. Okay, this is actually kind of a trick question. What is work? Work is force times distance. It doesn't say anything about time. So who cares what the time is? Doesn't matter if it's 10 seconds or 10 hours or 10 years or five seconds, the work is force times distance. So I just multiply force times distance for the gorilla. So the gorilla is 360 pounds times 20 feet which is 7,200 foot pounds, done, finished. That's it. So what about the time, 10 seconds or five? That is irrelevant. Okay. It's the same amount of work. Okay. So work is force times distance. Now you can get something in related to time and that would be something called power. Okay, so power in physics, and again, some of you physics people know this, <clears throat> that de depends on time perhaps. But if I just take 360 pounds, move it 20 feet, this gorilla does 7,200 foot pounds of work, whether it's five seconds, 10 seconds, or 50 years, or whatever. Okay, the same amount of work. Okay, it's not the same amount of power, though. All right. All right. Now you say that's too easy. You're right. <laughs> so I'm probably not going to give you something like that in the test. To be frank with you, that's too easy. All right. So how do I make the problem harder? like starting tomorrow when I do these problems. Well, work is force times distance, that's too easy. We're not gonna have a constant force or we're not gonna have a constant distance. 
So what about the rest of the problems I'm gonna show you? There's gonna be something different about it where it's not as easy as the gorilla problem. Although we're not gonna to totally forget about the gorilla problem. In fact, I'm gonna to refer to the gorilla problem. So if you hear me say the gorilla problem, what is the gorilla problem? It was the gorilla was what, 360 pounds going 20 feet. That's too easy. It's simply force times distance. It's the simplest case scenario, right? I refer to this uh, as I develop some of these other problems as we go along. Okay, so that's a nice introduction to 6.4. I did want to get out of the way, you know, some formulas, units, acceleration due to gravity, and stuff like that before I go on to harder problems like problem three and so forth. Okay. But other than that, I'm done. So we're here. I've snuck in a little bit of 6.4, so I'm a little bit ahead. Uh, so tomorrow I'll give you the quiz, 6.2, 6.3, due at 11.59 p.m. So once I end class, we have the rest of the day, more than half a day um, to do the quiz. Well, and that, that's if you join the actual class. Uh, for those of you that aren't looking at the video, you, know, you may have to wait until the video comes up later in the afternoon, but you still have several hours to do the quiz. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna stop share and look at the chat and see if anybody has any questions. And if not, we're gonna call it a day. Again, uh, case you morning, no, I'm not taking attendance. I don't take attendance. The only time I take attendance is on exams. Okay, so again, exams, um, I take attendance and I need to see that you're there, all right? So any questions, otherwise we're done. Can we use the seventh edition of the book? Yeah, you can use the seventh edition. It's up to you to choose equivalent problems though, and I'm not gonna, really help you with that. Um, but yeah, just find problems that are quote unquote like the seventh edition. All and right, so anything else could... please, otherwise we'll call it a day. Yeah, the last thing was uh, for the foot ID, just name and picture, correct? First name, last name, picture, everything else jotted out? Correct, so uh, I think I showed you that before, right? So on your ID, yeah, yeah. I just need your first and last name and a picture. Gotcha, all right, Lock out. I don't need your address, your age, weight, height, address, you know, all that stuff, just cover it cool. up. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anybody else, please? All right. So that'll do it. So everybody have a good day and we'll see you next time. Okay. All right. Bye everybody.